the next question is from Muhammad Salah, Yemen. Dr. Zakir, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. If Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not the last of the prophets and messengers, you would have been our prophet at this age. Astaghfirullah. May God bless you and increase your likeness and may God combine you with the prophets and friends in paradise, God willing. Amen. My question is, what is the most moving and convincing thing I can use to persuade non-Muslim people to make them accept Islam? The brother asked the question that what is the most important and logical way that I can persuade a non-Muslim to accept Islam? Before he asked the question, he said that if Prophet Muhammad was in the last messenger, he would consider me to be a prophet in this age. Astaghfirullah. This is totally wrong. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it is mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3686, where the beloved Prophet said that if there was a messenger going to be after me, it would be Umar al-Khattab. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And you know, he was the second caliph of Islam. Of course, we know that the prophethood has ended. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40, that Prophet Muhammad, Maqana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Mirjalukum, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, Walaki Rasulullah, but is the messenger of Allah. And he is the Khatmun Nabin, he is the seal of the prophets. The Prophet has ended and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is the last and final messenger. And but natural, as the Prophet said, after him, if anyone would have been the Prophet, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And there are various Sahabas. Today, no human being, not even I, are anywhere close to any of the Sahabas. Leave aside the Khulfa Rashidin, not to talk about Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Even the Sahabas, 124,000 Sahabas, no one today, not even me, nowhere are we close, even 1% to the Sahabas. The level that they are, that the best generation is the generation which was living at the time of the Prophet. Regarding your second thing that you did duas for me, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he accept your dua and I do that dua too, that may he put me in Janitor Firdaus in the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ambiyas and the Khulfa Rashidin. And I do that dua and I'd like to thank you for the dua. Regarding your main question, that what is the best way to convince a persuade a non-Muslim to accept Islam? There are various reasons that the non-Muslims accept Islam and the most common and the best reason is Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the survey said. My reply to the first question, the survey done in Mannheim University in Germany, that the people who are the most satisfied are the Muslims. And the reason is Tawheed. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the concept of God in Islam is unique. Though all the religions basically believe in monotheism. But Tawheed is not merely monotheism. It is far above that. Besides believing in one God, we should also worship Him and no one else. And if you hear my talk on concept of God in major world religions, I've given a section of the talk on Tawheed. Tawheed al-Rububiyah, Tawheed al sifat and Tawheed al -ibadah. And we Muslims are not supposed to worship anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we worship anyone, that's called a shirk, which is the major sin. So the maximum non-Muslim that they love is about the aspect of Tawheed. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's supposed to be worshipped. And he's alone. He doesn't have any partners. He's the most wise. He's the most knowledgeable. That is the number one. Then we have Salah. Then we have other aspects. For more details, you can refer to my cassette on concept of God in major world religion.